Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Guru and Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, whenever you're ready, we will begin our Srimad Bhagavatam study. And today we will continue from Canto number six, chapter number two, verse number 27. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, take your time. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we do hear you. Okay, Okay, this is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 2. Verse 27. Dinmam duskritam kul kajalam. Hitfopalam satam yoham. Surapimma satam magam. So this is a, a Jamil. He's waking up from his illusion after being saved by the by the Vishnu Durdas. When the Yama Durdas come to take him away, be punished by Yamaraj, he was saved because somehow or other by the mercy of the Lord, he called the Lord's name, although he was calling his son still because the name of the Lord is more powerful. He was able to get free from the reactions of his sinful activity because he called in the in the helpless state. So now he's lamenting his situation here. He says, Alas, all condemnation upon me. I acted so sinful that I degraded my family tradition. Indeed, I gave up my chaste and beautiful young wife to have sexual intercourse with a fallen prostitute, a company accustomed to drinking wine. All condemnation upon me. She was thought but short, but very uh, precise and very direct purport. This is a mentality of one who is becoming a pure devotee. One is elevated to the platform of devotional service by the grace of the Lord and the spiritual master. One first regrets his past sinful activity. This helps one advance in spiritual life. The Vishnu Buddhas had given Ajamiya a chance to become a pure devotee. And the duty of a pure devotee is to regret his past sinful activities in illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling. Not only should one give up his past bad habits, but he must again always regret his, sin, his past sinful acts. This is the standard of pure devotion. Gorvani Pichari may never say such to me, Ravi, as yet the day Satari Nay. Panchakova de Rubesha, Kripa Sindhu, Pay the Jap, the Titanum, Bavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, no Mahona Maha, Jai Shi Krishna Chaitanya, the Bugit Yananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadara Sivasa, the Gor, Bakta Vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'll we'll begin in just one second. I just have to do one small little thing.
So here we're getting a indication of one of the requirements in order to progress on the path of devotional service. And that is many of us have come to Krishna consciousness at different stages in our life. And most of us have been engaged in materialistic and even sinful activities prior to uh, coming to Krishna consciousness. There's a type of thing, it's called contrition. It's also meant as a type of uh, repentance. This is purifying. You should understand it's not just some some expression of regret it's more than that it actually purifies the mind and helps to entrench a sense of uh, feeling of uh, of uh, regret yeah in that sense as it says here one must regret both his past activities and his analog also uh, not only past sinful activities but the past material activities also even if they're not sinful still they block one's devotional service but here we're talking about sinful activities the Prabhupada says this is a standard for pure devotional service so it allows one to become uh, serious in, in the execution of devotional service. We even see that in, in the day to day life of a devotee, the one who's trying to become a devotee, and that is uh, even when they're situated in devotional service, or at least trying to become situated, they sometimes split and again fall back into their best past bad habits. Um, and because of that, they uh, again, look and regret what they have done and start to sometimes chastise themselves, sometimes feel very uh, regrettable and their mind becomes somewhat free from the tendency to commit these activities again. Of course, it takes the power of pure devotional service to do that. Um, we see here one of the biggest blockages in the life of Ajamil is that he had no good association. He never associated with Vaishnavas. He stayed outside of that association. And although his early life was one of devotion, as it says here, you know, he uh, he degraded his family tradition. His family tradition was that he was born in a Brahmin family and he was engaged in some preliminary stages of devotional service as a young man. So all that was, was uh, left behind when he uh, kind of came in contact with this situation, which involved a prostitute, which attracted his mind away from all of his previous good activities and uh, left him on, a, on another course of events, which brought him to commit so many sinful activities. Maya is very strong, Prabhupada used to say, to the devotees, he said, one of the problems with you Western devotees is you don't fear Maya enough. Mm -hmm. He said that a few times, and he indicated that, you know, because most of his, his disciples, in fact, all of his disciples in the early days, and even after some time, were mostly coming from Western countries. And because they had so much association with and the material energy prior to that. Now they were situated nicely in devotional service. But still, we found many times that many of them fell back into their old bad habits or never really developed 
there was a sense of strong determination in Krishna consciousness because of uh, the past tendencies would again resurface. And one of the ways to prevent that is in good association or dissociation of the saintly. Therefore, Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Saru Sachi, Hoi Lava Matka, Saru Sangha, Saru Siddhi Hoi. That even if one associates with a pure devotee for a Lava Matka, this verse says Lava Matka, Lava Matka means one to eleven to second. One, even in that uh, unmeasurable time, one can. Uh, uh, Purify themselves from all sinful activities and the power of devotion and service. But then again, one can also, in a love of matta, again fall back into sinful activities simply by their own association. And therefore, uh, this verse has a certain point of importance upon those who are serious in, in executing devotion and service. It helps them to become careful not to again put themselves in a situation where they could become again contaminated by bad association. Like it says that uh, uh, to associate with lusty women or men who are attached to lusty women, in other words, lusty men who are attached to lusty women, both of these are highly. Uh, condemned by the Shastras because this will again lead one to sinful activities. And so this, this repentance, we put in the Christian tradition, they call it contrition, contrite, the mind becomes contrite, or well, whereas it becomes fixed away from the, from the, uh, from the activities that had previously caused them to fall into such, uh, what we say, sinful and degraded activities. And therefore, one should also very seriously chant the, the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. By seriously chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, avoiding the 10 offenses, one will be just situated nicely in devotional service. And it will be very unlikely they will fall again into the battle of the So the power of the holy name, along with the association of saintly persons, gives one the strength to practice devotional service and protects one against it, again falling down again into the wrong activities. Uh, wrong activities can first appear in the mind, and if they stay in the mind, they can also grow into something that is, becomes a desire. So that's the worship. Uh, be aware of that. But if you allow for sinful activities or wrong activities, which are contrary to devotional service, to take root within one's thought process. The thought process is a feeding process. In other words, by allowing that to stay within the mind, Meditating, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dayato Visayam Pumsan, Tesu Sangat Sajayate, Sangat Sajayate, Kama Kama Toda Vijayate, Toda Bhavati Samohan Samohan Shri Divi Brahma Shri Divi Brahma Saburina Saburina Sabhanasati. Sabhanasati means to fall down again by contemplating the objects of sense gratification. One develops an attachment to them. By such attachment, lust arises. From lust comes anger, from anger, delusion, from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one again falls down into the material energy. This is called uh, pranashyati. One falls down. So these two verses from the Bhagavad Gita, chapters 2, 62 and 63, uh, give us the process of falling down. <laughs> and it starts with contemplating the objects of sense gratification. So once you contemplate, once you keep the mind fixed, you know, 
Krishna and devotional service, or things related to Krishna and devotional service, but specifically on Krishna. And as we develop our attachment to Krishna by meditating on him and chanting his holy name and serving him in different ways, our consciousness becomes fixed in that direction. And then even when these thoughts, these wrong thoughts appear within the mind, they, they're easily removed by the power of one's intelligence. Here it says here that when, when one, one's memory becomes bewildered, then your intelligence is lost. When your intelligence is lost, here is when fall down uh, takes place. When the intelligence is the saving factor, but one has to keep the intelligence strong by focusing mind on Krishna or in the, the activities of devotional service to Krishna. And then, and that comes by the, the, the process of devotional service. So one should chant, one should read, one should take only Krishna Prashadam, which purifies the mind, one should associate with devotees and engage in devotional service. One should worship the Lord in his deity form, either in the temple or at one's home. And uh, one should use one's time in 24 hours a day in devotional activity. Uh, if one does that, then, then that keeps away the effects of the material energy. And material energy is very contaminated. Prabhupada oh, says, just like um, he used the, the material world as like a hospital. And in the hospital, you have people who are sick. <laughs> and uh, because people are sick, those who work in the hospital have to take precautions not to become sick affected by the sick people. So the doctors, the nurses, the staff that work there are very uh, aware that they can also be infected if they are not careful to take the proper precautions. So we are in the material world and this material world is contaminated. The three modes of material energy and particularly in today's world, the blood, the lower modes, passion and ignorance are more prominent than the mode of goodness. In fact, the mode of goodness is, as it says in the Shastra, is conspicuous by its absence. We don't even notice the mode of goodness anymore because it's not there. Everything centers around uh, you know, enjoying the senses and developing economic programs in order to gain more facility to engage in sense. Now this is the modern day society and it's very strong. Therefore the disease in the hospitals is quite strong. Therefore as devotees who are trying to keep, become unaffected by that, we have to take proper precautions. Therefore we have to chant our rounds every day seriously without, uh, without deviation. Every day read Srimad Bhagavatam or hear Bhagavatam and uh, spend our a day in activities of devotion. So if we do that, and especially, and this is with emphasis associated with devotees, and then uh, we will uh, avoid falling down into this material energy because it's easy to fall down. It's very difficult to stay up. Why? Because uh, the material energy is so contaminated. It is so contaminated. We see neither Prabhupada says in the uh, second, can second chapter of the first canto, in verse number 16, I think it is, he says, even great stalwart devotees uh, have fallen down in material energy. Yeah. 1, 2, uh, 16, no, 17, I'm sorry, verse 17. 1, 2, 17. And then you'll see in that, in the purport, Prabhupada says here, so keep going down. Okay. Unless one is free from all sins and material sins of time, many stores and of devotion are fell victim to these allurements, which are uh, what the attraction of women and the attraction of wealth. Are very difficult problems for the devotees making progress in devotional service. 
But one is helped by the Lord himself, the whole process becomes easy as anything. So, um, yeah, so he said, the prophet has become restless in contact with women and wealth is astonishing. Because every living entity is associated with such things from the high memorial, the high remote time and memorial. But if one is engaged in hearing the glories of the Guru, he gradually realizes his position and he gets the strength to defend himself from disturbance and granted all disturbing elements are eliminated from his mind. So here, Sri Krishna, the personality of God, and his arm out the super soul in everyone's heart, and the exact truth of the devotees. He, Krishna himself, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has an urge to hear his messages. And these messages are quite virtuous because they are in relationship to the Supreme Personalities and his activities. And when they're heard and chanted, uh, they purify the heart. And then one awakens to enthusiastic devotion. One gets attracted to Krishna, one wants to associate with Krishna through the activities of devotion. So here, but still, Prabhupada warns in the third point that you know many who have performed devotional service can also come down if they're not careful. And then he mentions the two things. When the, when the word woman is used in the Shastra, it has two meanings. It says the word woman means in, in Shastric definition, woman means two things. One, it means it means um, opposite sex. It doesn't necessarily mean just the female gender. It means opposite sex. So it applies in both cases. The Prabhupada would say, for man, woman is woman, and for woman, man is woman. So this is really, you see the word is not just limited, it's for both genders. One has to be very careful. Sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that a person who is already married and has a wife can associate with other ladies and not even you know, it is considered to be permissible. But that is not the case. Even that is, uh, should be carefully avoided. In certain emergency situations, um, these things are allowable, but then should also be very careful. Because if you read the third canto, um, um, you'll see the, the attraction to the opposite sex is the basic principle of spiritual, uh, of uh, material existence. Whom some striya bhutuni bhava meita vayo meita, I can't hear who. The Pope Riha Shaitra Sitapta retired to Masamo Hamba Mahamba Mahati. This verse is spoken from Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse number eight. Uh, in that verse, it gives the basic uh, principle of how material energy works. Five, five, eight, if you want to go to that verse. Some stream in the Tuni Bhagavan can try to look for who they are. I hope we have shaft at the top of the time to Nasamoha. Rama Hama Mati, here it goes. And the attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception, which ties together the hearts of male and one, becomes attracted to body, home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one likes illusions and creatures. And one thinks in terms of I and mind. So here it is the basic principle of material existence that spans material existence to unlimited levels of uh, varieties home, property, children, wealth, business, uh, uh, relatives, rank. You know, it, it, it goes on and on and on. All of these are extensions of the individual's uh, attachment to the material energy. 
from here. So um, this is a very strong verse. I don't know if I can read it. Some of you might decide to turn off the video if I do. So I better not. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's basically quite heavy and it's getting right to the point that uh, the spirit soul has nothing to do with anything in this material world. Uh, everything we, uh, we are, we accept based on that. But there is a, what is a, there is a legal way to, uh, to enjoy sense gratification, that is called grihasta life. And grihasta life means to allow for that relationship based on religious principles and the activities of devotional service with, with, uh, with what is it called? measurements of activities in relationship to the contact with the opposite sex, even within the married life. So in other words, it's regulated life. It's not simply a free chance to enjoy sense gratification under the name of married life. That condemns that also. It's meant to awaken one's desire to perform devotional service with a little bit of a, uh, a tendency to have something material in order to stabilize one's mental, physical, and emotional desires in such a way that they do not interfere with the process. Therefore, it has to be done in a regulated way and not simply not how nowadays people get married and say, well, now, you know, I have legal sex life and can use it as much as I want. Papa said, your wife is not a machine. It's not like that. It's, not, it's meant to, to give restriction and allow for what we say, the development of children, which would, which would allow them to, to grow up and also become the body of the Lord. So there's a restriction there. And we can go into that subject matter quite deeply because it has a lot of aspects to it, but I don't think it's necessary. But the point here is this is what happened to Ajahn. I mean, he was nicely situated. He was married. He was a young man, very, very simple, fuck up, Brahmin, nice wife, good family. Everything about his life was, was uh, ideal. But still, he became degraded by... Uh, just becoming a little inattentive in his activities. And so um, this indicates here how easy, how, how not, well, not all how easy, but how powerful material energy is. That one, unless one is very, very strict in their execution of devotional service, you can easily again fall into material entitlement and simple. But if one does, or if one starts to see themselves doing here, this, um, this idea of regretting one's past sinful activities, uh, lamenting how foolish one has become by going in that direction and determined and making vows not to go into that same area again, this is a purifying element and it helps one to achieve pure devotion. Okay. Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful class. Thank you always for your wonderful association. Yes, indeed, it was a very heavy and wonderful topic that we discussed. You covered so many things. Maharaj, sorry for the um, disturbance that we were having. I don't know if it's your cell phone that is close to the microphone or something. Now we don't have any noise, but there was something, um, yeah, some mm -hmm. noise coming. Devotees, if you could kindly un unmute your videos, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Of course, the most important thing, one of the most, I think, Maharaj, the takeaway is, is always remain in devotee association. That was the key reason for which Ajamila fell down, as, as we see. Uh, but yes, I have Shukakara Prabhuji, if, if you would like to unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, accept my recommendation that you lotus feet. All goes to Maharaj and all the support. Prabhuji, this topic, I think of all the regulatory principles, the 
fourth one is the most difficult. <laughs> most of the yeah, because yeah. meat eating, meat eating is stop, and gambling is stop, intoxication is stop. But this is internal; it is not external. A subtle way, subtle way also you may do sins by thinking. Also, there's a sin. So, I think uh, the only way is the, the devotee association and chanting. Anything yeah. else? Can you? Yeah, when you develop, yeah, develop your chanting up to a certain level of fixation, then you you won't be disturbed. It says that even though you're situated in the candy shop, we won't be attracted to eating the candy. Mm. So uh, yeah, because you you have to say other thing or say they're so large, I'm so just yeah, from this level of our thing. 259 in Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, by developing higher things, one can give up the lower things. Well, one can only give up the lower things when one develops the higher things. And the higher days is Krishna. And the higher place centers around here in the chanting the Gita. And associated with those who are like the women. Vashila Prabhupada, I think, told once that uh, the devotees, they, they are doing all the, the devotional service, but while going to Goloka, they see the Swarga Loka, they, they, they have some, they, they, they fall down. So many doesn't get the final mark. Till they reach, they are not sure. Brahma Lok or any Lok, Gandharva Lok. Yeah, these are all different levels of fear and stages, but none of them are stable. And you can fall down from even Brahma. We saw Lord Brahma, how he, of course, Brahma was also demonstrating how he and also Lord Shiva can also be victimized by the opposite sex. Brahma chased after his own daughter. What was her name? I forgot her name. And uh, because of his sinful activity of chasing after his own daughter, like he had to give up that body, so the body became fog. This was mentioned in the, in the, in the Bhagavatam in the third in the chapter. And so uh, Prabhupada said Brahma is all right, but he's teaching us, you know, even I can be victimized by, by the sense gratification of his sex life. So what about you? Lord says that the Mohini Murthy, of course, that was an inclination of the Lord. But he also became quite bewildered by the, the, the female form. So yeah. it says in the Shastra that the, the female form of the woman is, is the force of attraction for everything in this world. So one has to be aware of the how one can fall down in devotion and service and stay fixed and chanting in here in the glories of the Lord and regularly associate with devotees. These things will stabilize one's Krishna consciousness and will help one to see that material sense gratification is just another form of illusion. But, you know, anyone can fall down. <laughs> well, that's actually mentioned that until you get to the platform of the love of God, Bart Maharaj mm -hmm. from the platform of the Bhava. He became attracted by a deer in the woods. But mm -hmm. one of the reasons why his attraction increased, I mean, if he were, how could such a great soul give up his spiritual practice and develop a loving relationship with a little tiny deer because he had no association. <laughs> it was alone in the book. There was no one there to say, hey, Bart, you know, you're, you're Maya. <laughs> he was somewhat, you know, away from anything that could, could, could remind him of what he should have been doing. Therefore, um, that, that point was made. 
But another, another point is that even on that platform of Baba, which is the preliminary stage, the pure level of God, uh, a person can fall down. And there are many examples of that also. Uh, Prabhupada said it's dirt to get fall down, it's first class to put back up. So when you fall down, get up. <laughs> Don't stay down. Don't lament falling down. Remember how you fell down and try to avoid how to do that and stay fixed in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That will give you the strength and the determination to uh, avoid and be protected from uh, the, the attacks of mind. We don't. You know, it's just if we forget Krishna even for a few moments, we are to being attacked by mind. Hmm. Yeah, so practice, practice Krishna consciousness, and we always seek out the association of faith and person. Hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yeah. We have a comment uh, in the type of a question from uh, Scarlett Mataji. She's saying, what if the devotees are the reason why one cannot focus on devotional service? That is the wrong association. Mm, right. It's not the reason. Maybe there are certain persons who appear in one's life as a devotee and they're not really serious in the practice of devotion service. There are also, we have different levels of it. We have the neophyte devotee. The neophyte devotee is a person who, who uh, thinks that uh, uh, Krishna is everything, spiritual master is everything, but the other devotees are all, you know, they just interfere with my Krishna. It's called neophyte. Uh, so they worship the Lord, but they don't do it in the right mood because to worship the Lord means to, to associate and to serve the Vaishnavas. Because they don't do that, they think their service to Krishna, the spiritual master, is all in all. And that's what they focus on. That's called Neophyte. So one should avoid such association. One should associate with second class devotees who are on that platform. And or first class devotees. First, to find first class devotees is very hard these days, but there are a few. But second class is the standard by which one should execute devotional service. And the characteristics of a second class devotee is one, and they, they give their love to Krishna, two, they associate with and serve other Vaishnavas, three, they um. They uh, avoid the non devotees, the materialists, and uh, or they, uh, they try to uplift the fallen angels. So, these are the, this, these are the type of devotees you can associate with. This is called the uh, Madhyaman platform. So look for that association, and, and uh, there's where you get the strength and the enthusiasm for your, for your own practice. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your question. Um, I have a little comment from uh, Jyoti Mataji. She says, Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam to you, Maharaji. My question is request. What can I do to make you happy, Maharaji? I'm at a neophyte level. Who's speaking? This is um, Jyoti Mataji. Her name is Jyoti Takne. She's asking, what can she do to make you happy? I and mean, she's basically asking uh, on all of our behalf, because at least I am at a neophyte level, Maharaj. If oh. you have any. To make me happy is to make is to become advanced in Krishna consciousness. 
We want to see devotees make it faster in Krishna consciousness. We want to see the devotees take up the responsibility of engaging in devotional service. We want to see the devotee taking time to help others also uh, progress in their devotion. So that makes, but Prabhupada gave the indication when someone asked him, you know, what pleases you the most? Prabhupada said, if you love Krishna. So anyone who is trying to love Krishna is very pleasing to everyone. I love Krishna. Yeah? <laughs> Do whatever it takes to love Krishna. Remember the... Dad his name, remember him, read about him, serve his devotees. These are all the ways to develop our love for Krishna. Jyoti Mataji, you wanted to add something more? You may unmute yourself, please. Dhanvat Pranam, Mataji, Hare Krishna, Dhanvat Pranam. Uh, Guru Maharaj Ji, I have one more question, uh, which is very short. Uh, I just want to know how, what is the uh, seed point, means what is it from where the uh, things come, like we criticize. So if you want to stop the criticism, so what is the seed, where is the seed to stop the criticism? Start criticizing yourself. <laughs> if you have that tendency to criticize, and there are people who who have that, then just find fault with yourself instead of finding fault with others. And then you, when you find fault with yourself, then you can see, oh, well, I have to correct this fault and have to correct that fault. So turn it inward instead of turning it outward. That's one way. But you should know, another way is to see, know how dangerous it is to your spiritual life to find, to criticize, to find fault with others. It, can, it, can, it will cause one to fall down. So try to see the good. It's mentioned in the chapters that there are four ways to see. Yeah, four ways. One. Is to see, to see a certain person and look for their bad qualities. The second is to see a person and see their good qualities and their bad qualities side by side. And focus on their good qualities and don't look at their bad qualities. Uh, higher than that is to see a person's bad qualities with potential good qualities. And higher than that is not to see any bad qualities. So we want to function on the second one. We see good qualities and bad qualities in others. So focus on their good qualities and forget about them. Not important. Thank you, Maharaj. Would Pralanana um, Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead? Uh, thank you, Rekh Mataji. And uh, then we're Pranam to Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj. <laughs> you as well, Hari And then we're Pranam to everyone. Uh, according to, you know, what I heard today, and the story starts from Dhyaya to Visha and Punsa. Because our mind, when it focuses on the on the, the subject matter of senses, and matra, that's where the story starts. And I like one slogan Bhagavad Gita, which I try to practice so much, and that is, Bhavan Krishna he says, take a hammer and put me into your head. So the antidote for you know Jayato Vishnu and Punsam is Mayevmanadhasya. So I try to keep myself uh, you know focused on Lord Krishna without being disturbed by external you know stimuli from uh, from uh, knowledge gathering senses. So that's how somehow I am able to keep uh, focused on Lord Krishna, which will prevent the, you know, the fourth, half, fourth sinful activity as uh, Sukhar, Sukhar was mentioning like that. Well, the story starts from the mind. 
you know, and in my practice and all that, you know, I, I have dealt with so many women and, you know, uh, doing the obstetrics, gynec and all that. I understand the interplay of the senses and, uh, you know, the, the stimuli which, which take you to the sinful activities. So Sri Prabhupada's advice of uh, Sadhu Sangh and, uh, you know, keeping in touch in one way or other way with Lord Krishna, chanting, hearing, reading, or instead of watching TV, instead of, you know, going through uh, mundane talks or mundane, mundane magazines or whatever. If we keep in doing little, little this way, that way, like that in Krishna concept, that will probably, you know, help a lot in preventing. Otherwise, you know, this external world is full of what? so many emails. They come with naked women's pictures, you know, just, just for nothing. They, they are sending all this kind of stuff to everything. So this is what I <laughs> try to practice and it, it helps me somehow or other. Thank you yeah, very much for allowing me to speak. You're giving, you're giving us the process. The process is to avoid anything that is uh, contrary to devotion of said you have to think of something. Why not think of Krishna? <laughs> Keep pictures of Krishna everywhere in your house. That helps. Wherever you go, you'll see a picture of Krishna or something spiritual. Wonderful. Thank you, Maharaj. And devotees, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and go ahead while Maharaj is here. Hare Krishna. Everybody has become sublime, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Finally, maybe just Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, this is Balram Prasad Das from uh, Naperville. Maharaj, uh, actually, the you know attraction to the opposite sex is natural, if I understand. But there are there are pushings and pullings every day. Even if I walk outside, look, um, or even sitting in the system working on the laptop, um, open some email on the uh, on the right side, left side, something will be popping up. You know, this uh, these attractions are every day there. Um, sometimes yes, we, we I, I know I need to tolerate but sometimes it uh, keeps pushing, pulling every day. Um, Prahlarana Prabhu said, yes, focus on Krishna. Yes, we do focus on Krishna, but still there is uh, there is always some kind of temptations. Yeah, it's really, uh, this is Kali Yuga. Because it's Kali Yuga, it's all pervading. Advertising was full of this. You know. Continue. Well, um, you can continue? Yes, Prabhu. Oh, yes, Maharaj, I can hear you. Okay, continue. So I, I was thinking, you know, how consistently think about Krishna in spite of uh, chanting Hare Krishna. Even the bead bag is there in my hand, but still that attraction goes to um, the sense objects. So is there any way we can, is there any tips I can control myself? Well, he says the, uh, the sense objects are stronger than the, the senses. So they attract the senses. And the mind can also be attacked, attracted by sense objects. And, uh, but the intelligence has to be fixed. 
from the intelligences of saving grace, as will be mentioned, as mentioned in one verse from purple, the, the intelligence has to, you know, discriminate and also avoid one of the qualities of the, the intelligence. Two qualities are determination and discrimination. Those are the qualities of the intelligence. And one has to discriminate. This is unfavorable. Not really going to help me. It may be attractive, but also ultimately, Krishna is much more attractive than me. And one should avoid these lower forms of attraction, uh, even if there is some attraction. You know? But as as one makes advancement in devotional service, that attraction becomes less and less. And one starts to see the attraction is simply another form of illusion. That's all it is. So if the attraction is one thing, the reality of that association is completely different. A man may get attracted to a wife of another man and think that, oh, this looks good. But then if he tries to enjoy that, he may find himself getting killed. <laughs> Or he might wind up in some very difficult situation. So uh, one should see the result before one, while one is somehow or other. It says the intelligence, intelligent person sees the results before the activities. If I do this, if I get attraction to this, this is what will happen. Well, one has to have that discriminating intelligence to be able to understand that these attractions lead to various forms of material attachment and cause one to uh, lose their footing in devotional service and even maybe even fall down. So it starts on a subtle level, very innocently. And then it can increase to something very serious. So if you allow Maya one inch, she'll take two. If you allow her two, she'll take four. If you allow her four, she'll take eight. So an intelligent person will not even give in to a little bit, knowing that it can lead to more. It's all based on intelligence. I mean, the intelligence has to be sharpened by by transcendental knowledge. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, turn to that verse, uh, uh, fourth chapter, the last verse in the fourth chapter. Last verse in the fourth chapter. Yeah. Yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, four. What is the voice number, Maharaj? Uh, it's the last verse in the fourth chapter of Gita. 442 or something. Like that. 442. 442. Tasmata Gnana Samputam, Rutstam Gnana Sinat Manaha. Sipanam is something that you have done the Kishti Kishti Okay, go ahead. Read the translation. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Arm with yoga, O Bharata, stand and fight. Yeah, so 
ignorance is really mine. And then, yeah, ignorance is one of the features of how Maya works. It creates this idea that we get attracted to something that is contrary to transcendental knowledge or devotional service. And ignorance makes us think that Maya is, uh, is attractive, that we can enjoy material illusion. But with knowledge, Krishna says, with knowledge, armed with knowledge, with, with, with ignorance. Knowledge, transcendental knowledge is the, is the feature by which you apply to the attractions of Maya. The attraction may happen, but if you get attached, then you're in trouble. That's the thing. You may get some preliminary attraction, but you can cut that attraction off with knowledge. And ultimately, we have to get attracted to Krishna. Says that by getting attracted to Krishna, and then it's the higher taste, the real thing. One, Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's quality, Krishna's activity. Everything about Krishna is all attractive. And we develop that kind of attraction. And then we replace this, this lower form of attraction with Krishna, these different attractive features. Thank you, Maharaj. It will be, this is very helpful. Um. Yeah, you have to understand bhakti is a, is a fight. But this is a struggle of every day, no? At least, you know, we have to, it is not like a one day. It's a process. We have to keep going. That doesn't mean that I don't know, but it's, that's there, right? If you know, remember yeah. you also said some time ago, go to Mumbai, there is a billboards outside, which will automatically attract you. If you even don't want to see, it will show you. <laughs> so, so it's like that. Yeah, it's everywhere. When I'm in London, you walk down the streets of London, and oh, it's just like worse than a movie rated X, you know? It's just walking down London street. <laughs> Especially in the, in, the, in the main part of the city. We do our Harinam in uh, London. We go out and it's just like, whoa. We have to really stay focused on the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, may I add a little here, uh, Maharaj? May I speak a little? Yeah, quickly, uh, two, uh, questions, uh, two questions uh, that are sitting and ready to be answered. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, three babies. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful, wonderful class. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Guru Maharaj, my question is about Ajamil and his actions. He was a very Paka Brahmin, well trained, well brought up, very cultured. He had very pious, very good parents. He came from that society where rules were strictly followed. He had a beautiful, young, chaste wife, etc. Yet he got attracted to a prostitute and then completely went behind this prostitute. In those days, to break the rules of society means becoming a social outcast. And society's rules were very strong and people feared doing anything that would break those rules. Yet, how he could go ahead and do all those things? <laughs> Why don't you ask him? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, how can he have this is the power of material energy? What do you mean, how can he have Why are you asking, how can he do it? You're asking, how, how, how powerful is material energy? It's powerful. <laughs> it happens all the time. He's just one example. <laughs> There's so many examples. There's examples happening right around you right now. Even, even where you're situated. It's, 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 
Maharaj, do you have time to take one more quick question? No, well, yeah, Sukh Sri Devi's question is, is quite a combination of naivety and at the same time, uh, 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 kind of like, it, it kind of brings out a point, though, is that uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, just see the power of my mind in the form of a woman. <laughs> Even the great conquerors of the world are full victims. So Krishna in the third chapter, if you want to, if you want to know the power of the evolutionary energy, just read chapter 31, verses 31 through 41. 3, 31, 41. And Krishna explains it right there. Lays it out very graphic detail as well as purpose expand on it. So, you, if you don't understand how Maya works, you will be victimized by Maya. 31 to 41, verse number 31 to 41 of which chapter of which canto, Guru Maharaj? Third canto, chapter 31. 3, 31, 31. Okay, okay. I yeah, give this, a bit of I, give this, I give this message to all the Brahmacharya to read that. Thing. Now, if you want to, too, you can do <laughs> And as I said earlier, the attraction goes two ways. It's not just man is attracted to woman, the woman is also attracted to women. Many very chaste and very beautiful women have given up their comfortable position. As, as he talks about even about during his time when one of his uh, when, uh, one of the, not one of the gods but one situation where one lady she had a power move and she was married and her little son kept wondering who is this person coming to the household and she understood that son actually was getting aware of what she was doing and she killed her son. So yeah, I mean it, it, you can understand that this is the power of the machine energy. It can cause one to create great crimes in the name of enjoying something. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you for explaining that uh, reading on that is essential. I will be doing that. And yes, there is some naivety because in my family, I have never had such things happen. So for me, all this is like, how can this happen, you know? Um, you know, they even have these websites for the materials, it's not for the devotee, for the materials, it says, it's called extramarital, uh, an extramarital partners.com. So if you're married and you want a little action outside of your marriage, you go to this website and you can meet somebody who's also married and wants some action outside of their marriage. Extramarital affairs. Don't go there. <laughs> but it's a website. So they actually broadcast it. You have to understand this is this is the effect of Kali Yuga. Anything. And not anything goes, everything goes. It happens in so-called civilized society too. The whole process of devotional service, the whole, I'm sorry, the whole process of material energy works on this principle, the attraction between male and female. That's why rules, regulations, restrictions are meant to allow one to live in this world and not be victimized by all of these 
particular activities that can come by way of association. So one has to carefully follow these rules and regulations. As a brahmachari, especially as a grihasa, or married life, as a sannyasi and renounced life, or without following these, the principles of one ashram, one may also, again, be a victim of it. How many sannyasis have fallen down in the Krishna consciousness? So many. So many. Why? Because, because of you know, their carelessness or not staying strict in their, in their practice of Krishna consciousness. Ajamil was 86 years old. That he had another child. Yeah. His son was three years old. He was 88 years old when, when the Yamadis came. I could go on. This subject is, is unlimitedly sticky, but I wanted to relate this up too far. But that's the whole principle of material life. The whole principle of material life is Pum Sam Stri Amituni Bhava Nature. When Rashab Dev gives that point in that verse we read five five in five, this is the basic principle of material life. Um, therefore, regulation allows one to live a Krishna conscious life amidst all of this uh, you know, attraction. One has to follow the rules and regulations very carefully. And then when one will get the strength to uh, stay fixed in their devotion. Guru Maharaj, I have a follow up question if you don't mind. We can give it up at the gross level, but what about subtle sex desire? in the form of uh, name, fame, profit, adoration, distinction. How can the devotee be cautious about those things because they're so subtle? Well, first you have to be aware that you're, you're, you might be you know, victimized by that. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, glorify Krishna instead of Glorifying yourself. When you get some praise and uh, praise or some uh, some glorification for, for whatever you are or whatever you, whatever you do, just pass it on. All glory is to Sri Don't believe it. Huh? Don't realize it's another form of material attachment. I, 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 to get rid of the gross is easy, yep. relatively easy. To get rid of the subtle is relatively, relatively difficult. And the thing is, you have to get rid of the subtle because if you allow the subtle to stay, it can also come back in the form of gross. If you're cutting grass and you're cutting weeds, then you cut them simply at the level of the of the ground, the root stays in the ground. And then when the rain comes, the weeds come again. The one has to pluck out the root, the weeds at, at the root level. And that's the, that's what this profit adoration and distinction is. So by the strength of one's chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantras and service to the Vaishnava. This will give one the proper uh, my, my, uh, mentality not to become victimized again by these lower forms of attraction. That's an illusion. If somebody tells you how great you are or you want to be known for something you do, what do you get out of it? There's nothing to it. It's just.
Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. My heart is full. Uh, Nish Nishinga Leela, she's had a... Raj, we have a comment here, um, a quick question from um, Her Grace Nishinga Leela Mataji on the chat. She said, Dear Guru Maharaj, in connection to the last question, by the last question she meant in connection to the one before, which is Balaram uh, Prasad Prabhuji's question, she says, What's the role of a Grihastha ashram regarding protection of the mind and senses, especially with the opposite sex? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, well, the role is you know, in relationship to that role is that the, the wife should see the husband as Prabhu, or the husband should see the wife as Devi. The husband should provide everything they need, the wife needs in order to live nicely and practice devotional service. That means material security and spiritual guidance. And the wife should be enthusiastic to serve the husband according to whatever needs to be done. You should see her, her husband as her savior and, and as a representative of her spiritual master. And she should focus her attention on her service to her husband. And also she may also have activities outside, but her main service is to, is to be a dutiful wife in relationship to serving her. If that's not there, her mind will wander to you know, things on the outside. And that could, again, cause one to start looking towards these other things as optional enjoyment. Do you want to get to the real level, then you find that there is a lot of restrictions in relationship to the activity that was performed when they're in doing not national. But these are some of the basic principles that I just mentioned. She thanks you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Devotees, do you have any last minute questions for Maharaj? Please don't hesitate to unmute your video, audio, and do go ahead. I just want to say grateful to you, Maharaj. Please accept my respectful obeisances at your lotus feet. Hare Krishna. Seems like no further questions, Maharaj. You're in charge. Maharaj, I would love to continue this session forever. When is your next visit to Chicago, Maharaj, to Naperville, Chicago? It was so wonderful to see you here. When the temple opening is when? April? April. Akshaya Trutiya, April, next year, 2023. Fantastic. Thank you, Prabhuji. <laughs> Thank you. For, the, uh, for the inauguration of the temple, I hope. Yeah. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class and thank you so much for your wonderful instructions. Thank you.
we will you know we'll try to follow it <laughs> Was somewhat of a brahmacharya. Mm -hmm. But we can also take away some essential principles. Material energy is very, um, you know, very powerful and very deceptive. Mm -hmm. It can cause us to think in ways that it's not actually what is reality. And well, we have to take close to fish that have to take it. This is Shira Prabhupada's question. We have from Shira Prabhupada. And the same thing with the body for fixed and fish to come. Give your mercy to those who need it by preaching Krishna. So the person who preaches also listens to what they say, and then they also gain something from that. Sometimes we say that the person who is speaking is also learning, hearing, and also reflecting on what I'm saying is also I want to be doing also. I should be doing it. So when we preach or we speak to others, we that knowledge that will help us to fortify our own practice. Please bless us, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada is the reservoir of all of transcendental mercy. Just all, if you just take shelter of Srila Prabhupada, not only do you hear about him, just there are, there are, there are actually at least 50,000 texts. Pictures of Shiva Prabhupada, at least 50,000 more. You can just sit there and look at Shiva Prabhupada and his different transcendental expressions, his transcendental activities. And this is Krishna consciousness itself. We have to be attracted to Srila Prabhupada because he is the foundation for whatever we do in Krishna consciousness, whatever we learn in Krishna consciousness. This weekend, starting on Saturday, is the, at least here in London, and I, I think around the world, too, there's a, there's a festival of an honoring Prabhupada's appearance on the western shores of the world, around the eastern shores of the United States. So, yeah, take part. See if there's a festival going on with you. You're in London or in the UK, and there was a big program at the Akhivedanta Martin Manor. For two full days, starting at 10 15 in the morning, the 17th, all day into the evening, and then the next day also, same schedule. All of a sudden, around remembering Shiva Prabhupada's contribution to um, spirituality worldwide. It's uh, quite amazing. Okay, so uh, thank you, and we'll uh, see you again in two weeks. Thank you, thank you, Maharaj. I think, it, is that the noise that constantly was coming from your microphone, Maharaj, by any chance? I don't know. I've been having microphone troubles. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. And then...
Maharaj, it was so, so, so wonderful. We eagerly wait for your class. They are so simple. Hopefully, we are able to follow the nice and sweet and simple instructions that you always give to us, Maharaj. The more you praise me, the more I, the more I want to leave this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Class <laughs> 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 <laughs>